Let's create test cases using JUnit 5, and then we'll use Jococo to find gaps in our test coverage. As a bonus, we'll add a quality gate to our testing to ensure we have at least 90% code coverage. We'll start here in an empty Java project in IntelliJ. The only dependency we've added so far is JUnit 5. Let's start by adding a new Java class. We'll put it in a package called com.beginsecure, and we'll call it string class. And in our class, we'll add one public method that returns a string called getStringValue. It will have a single parameter of type string. And it will throw an illegal argument exception if it's passed bad data. Now inside our code, we'll write an if-then-else ladder to test our input. First, we'll check to see if the input is null. If it is, then we'll throw an illegal argument exception along with the string that says input cannot be null. Next, we'll check to see if the input is empty. If so, we'll return a string literal that reads empty string. Next, we'll check to see if our input string is empty once we trim all the white space. If so, the method will return the string white space. Finally, if all these checks pass, then we'll simply return our input value converted to uppercase. Admittedly, this is contrived code that you'll never see in a real application, but it makes for really good code that we can use to illustrate unit tests as well as code coverage for those tests. Now in the code, let's right click and select generate and have IntelliJ generate a test class for us. The class will be called string class test. Let's take all the defaults in this dialog and click okay. In our test class, we'll add one test method that will check for null. Recall if our method is passed a null value, then it will throw an illegal argument exception. So let's write a test for that. We'll call it test null input. We'll instantiate a new instance of the string class object called string class. And we'll use the assert throws method to assert that an illegal argument exception will be thrown. For the second parameter, We'll add a lambda function that invokes our string class value method and passes it a value of null. Recall in the code we wrote, this branch of our if-then-else ladder will indeed throw such an exception when it's passed a null value. Let's annotate our method with at test. Once that's done, our code is refreshed and IntelliJ recognizes our test code. We can run that test by clicking the green arrow in the gutter. It takes just a moment to run, and when it finishes, we get a green check mark next to the method test null input, meaning our test was successful. Let's close that out. And now let's go to our POM file, and we'll add our dependency for Jococo. Jococo is short for Java Code Coverage. It's a library used to measure code coverage statistics in Java applications, including how much of your code is being executed during testing. This helps developers and testers identify parts of an application that lack adequate testing so they can improve their test code coverage and quality. Below the closing dependencies element, let's add build tags, which are the parent container for all the build-related settings. Next, we'll add plugin tags, which are the containers for the plugins we'll be using. And finally, we'll add a plugin tag for our Jococo plugin. Inside that, we'll add a group, artifact ID, and version like we would for any other Java dependency. Our group ID will be org.jococo. IntelliJ guesses the name of the artifact we want. There are lots of Jococo artifacts. The one we really want is jococo-maven-plugin. And let's make sure we get the latest version. IntelliJ provides us a list, so let's take the most recent. Before we continue, let's click the Maven reload button. Maven will download our plugin dependency code, Everything is black now, so that means our dependency was resolved. Now come the execution tags. Within there is an execution tag, and we'll add our goals tag and a goal tag. Within the goal tag, we'll add a goal of prepare agent. This agent tracks which parts of the code get executed during testing, so we can create our code coverage report. We need to add another execution block, where we'll add an ID, a phase, and another goal. This binds the execution of the test phase of the Maven build lifecycle to our code coverage report. Don't worry if you didn't get all that. I'll post this code on GitHub so you can download it later. Now let's go back to Maven and run test. 
This is the Maven test versus the individual unit test that we were running just a moment ago from within the code that we had written. This will run all the tests as well as the Jococo plugin that we just added to our application so we can get a better idea of our code coverage. It takes just a moment to run. It finishes with a code of zero, so we know it was successful. Now let's open up the project folder and go into target, site, Jococo, and then click on index.html. This is the report that's generated for us about our project. If we drill into that, we can open it up inside IntelliJ and view the HTML here in IntelliJ. We can see in our output that 14 of the 21 instructions in our code were not tested, and five of six branches were missed in our tests as well. Let's drill into our application code. We'll click on the link, and then click on the string class, and then go into the getStringValue method. And we can see all the branches in our code that we didn't write a test case for. Even on line seven, we can see that we tested for null, but we didn't test for something other than null, so the branch is yellow, meaning it was partially tested, versus green, meaning it was completely tested. Looks like we've got some work to do. Let's close out of this and write some more test cases. We'll add another test case. We'll call it test empty string. It will take no arguments. In the method, we'll create another string class of type string class, and we'll use an assert equals statement. It will assert that the string literal empty string will be equal to the value we get back from our call to string class dot get string value when we pass in an empty string. We'll add our semicolon and then annotate our new test with that test. Once it's recognized as a test, let's run both tests now for our string class test. It takes just a moment for them to compile and run. In our output, we have two green check marks meaning both our tests passed successfully. Now let's go back and run our Jococo test coverage again, and we'll see how we did. Let's open up the index.html file again, and this time we see that we got 50% of the branches. Line seven was completely tested now, but still several branches are untested or only partially tested. Okay, it's time for a promised bonus. Instead of testing and checking again and again, Let's set a quality gate in our code to ensure that at least 90% of the lines of code in each package are covered with unit tests. If this condition is not met, the Maven build will fail. This is a great quality standard to set in a CI-CD pipeline or when you're performing a pull request and merging code into the main branch. To make the change, we'll update the Jococo plugin in our POM file. We'll go back to our POM file and add a new execution block below the one we added a few moments ago. I'll just point out the interesting parts here. You can pull down the code from GitHub and look at it later. The tag ID assigns our execution block a unique name. The check goal will validate that the code coverage meets our criteria. In the configuration block, we'll specify the rules that must be met. The tag element is set to package. This means each package in our code will be checked. Limit sets the criterion that must be met. Line specifies what we're interested in. Covered ratio says we're looking at the ratio of covered or tested lines versus total lines. And minimum is set to 0 0.9, meaning the acceptable coverage ratio is 90%. Let's run Maven update so our plugin is updated and any new dependencies are downloaded. At this point, we've defined a rule that says 90% of our code has to be tested or testing will fail. So if we go back to Maven and instead of test, let's run verify. We'll see in just a moment what percentage of our code is actually being tested versus what the rule we specified says. Notice it turns red. So let's click on the rule violation. And so this is saying that about 60% of our code is actually being tested and we have a threshold of 90%. So we have more work to do. Let's go back to our class. So remember our original class gets a string value, so we need to add more test cases for the last two branches of the if then else ladder for white space and also for good input. So let's go back to our test class. We'll add a new method. We'll call it test valid string. It will take an argument type of string called word. This time we'll annotate our test with a parameterized test. And we'll give it a set of values 
that will be passed into our test. We'll use the add value source annotation and set strings equal to a group of strings. In this case, the first will be hello and the second will be world. And in our test, same as always, string class equals new string class. And we'll assert equals that word dot to uppercase, the value we pass to this test case, will be equal to the value returned when we send that same value to the get string value method in our code. Let's give it a quick test. It takes just a moment to compile and run. And when it does, we see the test was run twice. First for hello and then for world. And in both cases, it was successful. Let's add one more test method. We'll call it test whitespace. It will take no arguments. Once again, string class string class equals new string class. And we'll assert that the string literal whitespace will be returned when we invoke the get string value method of the string class and we pass it to whitespace characters. And let's not forget to annotate our method with that test. And we'll give that test a quick run. And in just a moment, it finishes and we'll see that it was successful. So all our tests are passing. Let's go back to Maven and run Maven test. It takes just a moment for all four of our test methods to run. We get a green check mark for the entire test class. So everything is working. Let's go back to index.html and take a quick look at that. We'll bring that up in IntelliJ. After all our hard work writing test code, we can see that 100% of our code is green. We can drill into the method and see that every branch and every line of the code was tested. So we have 100% coverage on this. So now let's go and run Maven Verify. We finished with a code of zero and a green check mark. If we scroll up, we can see all of the coverage checks were met, meaning we achieved at least 90% coverage on our code. All right, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please share it with others. Thanks for watching and remember to always begin secure.